We are here in Las Vegas, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, with Piers Plaskett and Jay Easley with um, SSL, Solid State Logic, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a live console and Jay's new role and uh, and, and what's going on. So, uh, so to start with, what's going on? <laughs> well, I'm here. How are you? A lot of you know me from another brand, and uh, as of Monday, which was a couple of days ago, I am now with Solid State Logic and uh, working with the team on the live console and the, the direction of a new market for the company. And uh, really excited to be here and working with this fine gentleman. I have a lot of new technology with the new live console, and uh, it, it's really exciting. I can't wait to show it to all of you. So let's uh, talk about live consoles and SSL for a moment, because I got to admit, when I first heard it, I said two things. I, first, I said, really? <laughs> and second, it was like, wow, is the market going to support another $100,000? I mean, when you get down to it, if you're looking for a certain kind of thing with like lots of outputs and everything else, there's not that many choices on the market. There's an awful lot of digital consoles out there. There's an awful lot of choices. But when you move up to those high mix counts and everything, all of a sudden those choices get very, very narrow, very, very fast. So is that the kind of market you guys are looking at? Where, where do we see SSL fitting into the, the landscape, for lack of a better term? I think initially it's all about sound, uh, which hopefully is reassuring to people that might be considering it in that, uh, uh, from that perspective. I mean, we began in the music business uh, about 40 years ago. We transitioned and added broadcast and then moved into post-production. So this is our first venture into a new market segment. But it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very instinctive for us because we've spent such a long time being concerned about the way things sound. It seemed like a natural step to bring studio quality audio uh, to the stage. This point, Devil's Advocate, uh, I remember about Four or five years ago, I was talking with uh, uh, Tony White. The, he was out mixing Christina. And I asked him, I said, you know, him and Bill Chrysler, I said, so where does audio fall kind of in the scheme of things as far as, you know, how much emphasis is put on it? And Tony said, I think we're right behind hair and makeup. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, given that that, you know, is kind of a reality is, is is great sound enough I think great sound is enough to start the conversation that's a great answer and and I think that that you know there is rightfully an assumption that if we built an audio uh, uh, a mixing console for the live market that it is going to sound good so uh, we spent a great deal of time and effort and money focusing just on that aspect of the console and uh, because of course we want, even though it's assumed that the console is going to deliver that, we, we do want that first impression when you push the faders up and say, oh, yeah, it does sound good. Okay, now let's look at the rest of it. I think that you know, the, the fundamental de design philosophy of the console is that we've approached it where we've put in a bunch of new things, which we can talk about, uh, but we've given you the option of working the way that you want to work. So if you're a person that likes to to, to touch controls, to to be very much hands-on, uh, you can drive the console that way. If, on the other hand, you're the iPad generation and you would like a multi-gesture screen where you can pinch, where, where, where you can zoom, where you can drag and drop, all of that stuff is there as well. Now, that, that particular type of interface isn't going to appeal to everybody, so therefore you don't have to use it that way. But okay. I think that the combination of both approaches allows you to say, this is the way that I'm used to working. I can work that way on the SSL console. On the other hand, wow, this is some really new, cool stuff, rearranging the processing order, uh, for instance. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing that we can do. Um, and just dragging that around the screen, you know, mute the channel, change the order. Oh, really? Channel, off you go. You can change the processing order on a drag and drop? Yep. Nobody does that. Well, now they do. That's just one bit. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, what, what, a, what a new tool is about is making your job easier. You know, if it doesn't make your job easier, there's no point in even opening that book. 
Well, so uh, absolutely. You put this many tools in front of somebody and they can kind of pick and choose how they want to mix their show. And that sort of flexibility to be like, well, I'm at 12 VCAs right now, but you know, I think I need a couple more or maybe eight more, or maybe 20 more. We can do that on this new desk. 